Well, it's wonderful uh, this morning to have with us Pastor Fergus McIntyre and his good wife, Judy. Let's welcome them. Put your hands together. We had a wonderful time last night, a leaders meeting, and this morning in our first service. And, uh, you know, Pastor Fergus and uh, Sister Judy, they have been ministering in this prophetic realm for like 40 years, close to 40 years. And that you cannot fake that. You cannot fake uh, 40 years of prophetic ministry. If God's hand's not upon you, that'll be pretty evident pretty soon. And we saw this morning, we saw last night, that the Spirit of God is mighty upon our brother because he's opened himself up to be a channel for God. He doesn't elevate himself to be anyone, as you'll hear when he shares with us, but God's Spirit is upon him. God's Spirit's upon him. And you're going, to be, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be touched today, I know. I just invite you just to open your heart. Maybe the prophetic is new to you. You may say, what is that? What is even the prophetic? Well, our brother's going to explain that more of that to you. But all I'd say, just open, open your heart and you're going to receive, you're going to receive the reward of a prophet as you uh, welcome our brother. So let's put our hands again together. Let's, let's thank him. Let's expect great things from God. I love that last song you were singing. That's asking for, that's, that's asking for trouble. <laughs> asking the Holy Spirit to turn up. Yeah, when the Holy Spirit turns up, he turns his on our ear. Who knows that? You never know what's going to happen when the Spirit of God turns up. I'm going to assure you of that. And but I, I, that's that's the kind of revival kind of singing that is. And um, you know, would you just give me permission this morning just to be prophetic? In other words, I, I find with this kind of call on my life, oftentimes I have to wait till I'm in the atmosphere, and that atmosphere di di dictates to me where I go on the inside of me. And I, can I just say there's, a, there's a, a sense of the presence of God here in this meeting that wasn't in the last meeting. Something shifted. Anyone notice that? I, I just suppose this is a new, this new crowd. But to me, something shifted in the atmosphere and I could feel there's, there's something opening up. There's something starting to crack and that's probably the mark of what happens, uh, you know, uh, in my meeting. So. Again, if you're coming, if you're looking for a healing, you're looking for a breakthrough, please don't. Uh, it's worth coming out of your way to try and make the nightmare because I can't do everything in one meeting. That's what I'm trying to say, and uh, I find that it, it, that what God uses me for is to, is to open up the atmosphere so He can come. But you're doing that yourself with that last song you sung, and so I'm going to be very bold. This way. And you may not be used to my style of ministry. Uh, you know, um, I'm Fergus. And what I love about you is you're you. And the way that God used you is going to be unique to you. You don't have to be like somebody else. Yeah. And uh, God, God validates what you do by, by the anointing of who you are and, and who you are. So I'm saying that for my own sake to cover my, cover my own butt right now. Because <laughs> I, I want to do something a little bit different. Because I really feel like the anointing of God is wanting to open something up in, 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 in the house for the future who can who can hear me yeah. it's, it's, you know i'm not here for now i'm here for the future i thank god i i i love i love the feeling you have i i, I, can, I can sense purpose i can sense destiny i can sense purpose i, I sense that your leader is, is is taking you somewhere but and he knows like i know that the only way this is going to happen if the spirit of god picks up something inside of you is that you come with them in the journey Who's ever felt hungry? Ever been? Ever felt hungry? Ever, those hunger pains you'd like more? Can I can I assure you that you can actually create that? We need to create that as the house of God. We need to create that hunger. So often we 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 get so used to church. We come and it's like it's just what we do. We come to church, and that becomes that becomes what we do as our, as our spiritual exercise. And we read our Bible, we pray, but we don't. We don't really see what this is really about. This is, this is that the house of God is where you get equipped 
You get trained. You get empowered. When you got born again, you got born into the kingdom of God. You got born into God's world. Yeah. And the reason you got you were born in his world is because he wants you to carry his world. Come on, who can hear me? Yeah. He wants you to carry his world back into this world. Yeah. You know, when you know, oh my God, when, when Jacob Jacob had a revelation. He, he, he's one of the first ones to get a, revela a revelation of the body of Christ. You know, he, he, he lays down, goes to sleep, and, and, and he has a dream. And in the dream, he sees a ladder that's ascending, not descending, it's ascending from the earth to heaven. Who heard me? It's ascending. It's not, not, it's not coming out of heaven. It's coming from earth, and it's going to heaven. And uh, there's angels ascending, not descending. There's angels working for you and I. And the voice of God's there. Jacob wakes up. He said, this is none other than the house of God, the gate of heaven. But there's no building. Right. I said, there's no building. Yeah, that's true. Who can hear it? Yeah. He's there. Yeah. He's the house of God. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm here to talk about the prophetic and, and I, hopefully I'm going to empower you in the prophetic. There's so many things like where I can start from. I don't know where to start, but, but there's one thing you need to understand that if you, if you can begin to allow the Spirit of God access to your life, then you're going to be prophetic. Not pathetic, prophetic. <laughs> and so Jacob, he said, this is none other than the gate of heaven. This is uh, the house of God. You know what? You know what, a gate. That's a place of access. Listen to me, church. I'm more concerned about the kingdom of God than I am about the church. You are in the kingdom of God. You're part. I'm part of the church. Don't get me wrong. I'm not playing. I'm not playing the church down. But the kingdom of God is out in the marketplace. The whole of people that are not in the kingdom yet that are, that are out there ready to come. They may not come into your. They're not going to come to the house of God. I found that when I when I went after souls, I found that once once they won once I won their heart, and they would come to church because I suggested them come to church, and they thought it was a good idea. But if I told them to come to church in the first place, they wouldn't have come. They don't like the church. They don't know why they don't like it. They just don't like it. But they like me. Right. Yeah. They like Judy. And when they like you and Jesus, then the house of God can't be that bad. But the kingdom of God's inside of you. And God can't wait. He wants, he wants, to, he wants to, you to flow with him and bring about a move of God. So you're the gate. You're the, that's how God's going to come into the earth, through people. You're the gate. It's an entry place. When you, you, know, you go through the gate to get to the garden. Go to the gate to get to your garage. You're between two worlds, between the kingdom of heaven and, and, and earth. Yeah. You're the access for the Spirit of God. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. God accesses earth through people. Right. If you don't do the work, who's going to do it? Yeah. To me, you're called from your mother before the foundation of the earth. He had you in mind for this season, this time, so he can flow his plan through you. It's got nothing to do with whether you think you're good enough or not. The fact that you belong to him, he called you. He called this farm boy, put his spirit in him. And I soon realized that because if I go back to when I got born again, I was a mess and suddenly I've got peace, love, joy, peace. I mean, I was... I was turned around in a moment. I was turned around. I, I had a transformation. And I've been having transformation in my life ever since. I'm not going to go two or three weeks without some. I'm going to have another encounter with God any, any given moment. Because I need it. Because I want to reach people with transforming power. And that can only happen when I have an encounter with God. I can, I can only talk to you about what's happened to me. You can only talk to people what's happened to you. Yeah. That's why Revelation 19 10 says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Your testimony confirms Christ. Yeah. 
if you could just love on people, if you could find a new way of loving, not as the world loves, but you, you can love like I can love. My love works different than Judy's love. Your work will work different than Judy's. But we need to find a way of loving our world so the Spirit of God in us can flow through us. Hang around me and I'll tell you something's going to shift. That's not arrogance. It's the fact I know there's something in me and something on me. I hope you know there's something in you and something on you. That you hang around someone, someone's going to, they're either going to move away from you because they can't handle it or they're going to love you for what. But I find the only enemy Jesus had were the Pharisees. Religious people who were, who were locked in their religious past, who were locked into information they thought they were the, the chosen race. They were. But they were disobedient and they lost, they, they lost out. They still thought they are it. But when Jesus turns up and shows them how to get out of it, they, couldn't, they were still looking in the past. Please, can you hear me today? You can't afford to look into your past. It's too small, it's too limited, it's too restricted. From glory to glory, he changes us. From one moment of transformation to another. This Sunday ought to be a day where you get transformed. I heard you singing that song. Man, if the power of God turned up like it did on the day of Pentecost, you and I would be scared out of our wits. Because we, we're living by an academic thinking about what God's like. No, no. No, no. Your peanut head's too small. I was preaching in Budapest. I had this young guy just left school. He's a great translator. He's full of passion and he was translating me, and uh, he was a bit of a worry, really, because he had everybody laughing, and I hadn't said anything that was funny. <laughs> That's always a worry. And we just had Yong Cho at our conference, and he was telling us that when he didn't translate it for somebody, if he didn't like it, he just preached his own message. <laughs> now I got this little squirt just out of high school. <laughs> little fellow. But he, he was passionate, he was going for it. Suddenly he's got everybody laughing, and I said, what are you... I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what Yong Cho said. I said, what have you just said? I have not said anything funny. I was talking about small-mindedness. He said, I just called them peanut heads. <laughs> Who knows that God's bigger than your peanut head? Yes. Are you happy to agree with that? Yes. Your eye hasn't seen it. Your ear has not heard it. Neither has it entered your heart what God's got for you, but that he reveals it by his spirit. Amen. There's a whole dimension. It's called the mysteries of the gospel. Paul was made available so he could reveal the mystery that's in Christ. The Holy Spirit is here today to unveil the mystery that's inside you. Christ in you. The hope of a manifestation of God. Come on, church. I am preaching like a desperate man. I've been preaching for 40 years. I think I have been preaching for 35, 40 years. And I've been saying the same things. And I've, I, I'm quite, getting quite desperate. I said to God two, three weeks ago, give me another 10 years. I've got to get this, I've got to get this message out. I'm here because, not, not because this guy called me. Because God spoke to me in 95. Gave me a vision of the church in power. And I saw lay people carrying the power of God in the vision. I've lived with this burden. I live with a burden. I'm here with a burden today, church. I don't have to preach. If I didn't preach in the church, I'd be out winning people. I'd be loving on people. Sometimes I wish I hadn't been sent to the church because we get so church, we, we think it's just another sermon. No, no. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's in you. There's no one more beautiful than you. Christ in you. The power of God's in you. Stop feeding lies off the devil's lies that you're not the person that God would call. God spoke through a donkey once because he couldn't get a prophet to be obedient. 
You're more valuable than a donkey. I'm serious when I say that. On the other side of your obedience today is a whole lot of people's freedom. I'm so thankful that God called me from this perspective. That I've seen so many people changed by the gospel's power. Your faith ought not to be in the, in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. Your faith is anchored in the character of who God is. Not faith in your faith. There's God's in you. Christ, the anointed one, is in you. We've got to let him out. He wants out. I love it. It comes out in the most natural ways. You don't have to, you don't have to be profound. You just gotta to be touched with the love of Christ. My God. Jesus paid an incredible price to get me out of and you. Those religious leaders, the church of the day, pounded his face, made him unrecognizable. His face was marred, the Bible says. They just kept pummeling him. One punch him, then another would come and punch him in the face. And this is the Son of God. But he did it for me. Come on, church. I'm sorry if I'm... you got to put up with this part of me. If you get me, you get this other side of it for nothing. <laughs> he did that for me. He took it. So that I could have the spirit of his, his spirit in me. He wanted me to help him reach the world that he couldn't get by himself. So he took the punishment so that God's power would raise him from the dead and be available for you and I so that when that power got on the inside he would turn it into prophetic people that would unlock and unleash the atmosphere, change people's lives, change their own lives. I said last night and this morning when God spoke to me, he said, he, after the vision dissipated, God began to speak to me. He said, it's not your job just to prophesy over me. And I can do that and I will do that. But the greatest thing I can do is for you to take this annoyance on me because my job is to, prepare, is to prepare you to do the work of the ministry. And he said to me, it's not the job of the advantage, it's just to go and, and win souls. It's his job to place his anointing on the church so the church becomes evangelistic. And there's people in this room who need to start walking in the mantle of the evangelist. I can pick you out right now, but I'm going to do it tonight. It's the Spirit of God. He's desperate for response from his church. He wants to take you where you can't take yourself. If you're a business person, he wants to so bless your business. He wants you to put your kingdom, put the kingdom into your business. You're not a, you're not a Christian doing business the corporate way of doing it. You've got to do it the way with, with the kingdom of God. I, I tell you, the, the most success I have is with Christian business people. Because they're thinking forward, they're entrepreneurial in nature, they, they look for more. Sometimes we, as people in the church, we, we sit listening to a sermon, and we think that's it. I led a young business guy to the Lord in, in the Czech Republic. Oh, God. Father, help me today. Sorry this bird gets big on me, mate. <laughs> Because I, I get excited when I think about this young guy. He was, he was a womanizer. He was, he, was just, he was just a mess. He gets safe and starts a business. Today, his business he turns over in excess of 150 million a year. Today, he sends, he, he, he sends his unsaved executives to a Christian conference 
because he wants the kingdom in there. I just come back from there. His, his, all his people are not saved, but they get dreams and visions. God gives them dreams and visions. Well, I was just before I went there. One of the one of the guys, one of his egg, wanted to sack one of his women. He said, no, not yet. It's not right. It's not right yet. In fact, he won't let anyone sack anybody without, them, first of all, help them to correct what needs corrected. And if you, if you can't correct them, you've got to go and find them another job. How's that for kingdom thinking? You just can't sack anyone without giving them another job somewhere. With another company, if you can't fit in that company. When I was there, you told me about this woman. 55-year-old mother who knows who one of the guys wanted to sack. You wouldn't let him sack him. She, she, she's traveling in the back of the car. Here's him and one of the executives talking about identity. She understands suddenly that she, that she doesn't know who she is. So she goes home and tells her husband. Husband agrees, so they start to work on this thing. They're not Christians. She goes to bed and, and she has a dream. And she dreams of Alice's of land. He's at the own 10,000 hectares of land. And she sees in the dream what's wrong with the soil. She goes and tells Alice. Alice is so impressed that he gets a scientist in. And the scientist says, how the hang does this woman, this 55-year-old mother who knows nothing about science, know what she knew? They put into practice what she saw and immediately his farm doubled its produce. It, it doubled in production. So guess what? One of another principles of the kingdom for him is that we're not here to make profits. We're here to meet the needs of the, of the farmers in the Czech Republic. When we do that, we will prosper. It's not about profits. It's about meeting people's needs. So all the farmers round about see what's happening. They do what he does. He's affected the whole of the Czech Republic. When I was up there this last a month ago, I led this woman to Jesus. The Spirit of God, you know the Bible says the, he pours out the Spirit on all flesh. God's building a kingdom. He wants his kingdom in this planet. Guess who he's doing? If you can't get your he'll he fell on a King Cyrus to put things in order. He falls on a little farm girl to put an order. But he doesn't want to use little, or he wants to use you. Are you am I helping somebody? If this non saved farm lady, or sorry, this office worker, can have a dream that changes the history of the Czech Republic for the farming industry. After 100 and 100 years of plowing the paddocks, the paddocks had, had formed a crust and the water wasn't absorbed, being absorbed. I'm telling the Spirit of God's on us. I told them in the first thing about a farmer out in Orange. I didn't know he'd been on seven years of drought, but I told him to go and prophesy rain over his land. He took, his, he took the camera with him. That's what I love about him. He believed in the character of God. Took the, car took the, farm ca took the camera and drove around his farm, took a photo, and the paddocks are beer. She, she wanted, Judy's got the photos there. We might, we might try and get them up on the screen for tonight. Paddocks are beer as a baby's bum. The rain comes. Then you see grass as high as the top of the fence three weeks later. Because he prophesied. Come on. We're prophetic people. The seed inside you is the seed of God. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's called the Holy Spirit. He's holy. He thinks like God thinks. He flows through us. Little old ladies to kids. 
My mother, my mother-in-law thought she was never going to die. Living for 25 years. No, I've got the joke. <laughs> she had the biggest connect group. At 75, 80, she had the biggest girls connect group because they loved her. She had a spirit of faith on her. I still don't know what bank she robbed. She went to England on a pension business class. How do you do that? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what bank she robbed, but, <laughs> but she'd do things. That, but, she, but, but she understood the spirit of God was in her and on her. Can we just all stand up for a minute, please? Let me. You see, what I, 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 I can give you all the scriptures. I can give you all. You've got to catch what you don't, you don't learn from me. You catch from me. You catch it. It gets on you. The Spirit of God's in this house. It's trying to take you somewhere. You've never been there before. It's bigger than what you see. It's bigger than your world. The only way it can ever change is that the Spirit of God turns up and you begin to see from His eyes. You see through His heart. It's the Holy Spirit of God. You've got to get out of your head and into your heart. David was a man after God's own heart. He was a far from a perfect man. But he had God's heart. Can we just imagine? I want you to look up like you're expecting something. Let's take a bucket. This is, I'm not trying to be smart here. I want to teach you how to receive from God. Get a bucket here. It's full of the presence of God. Get the bucket. Everyone, please follow me. You know what? Because... Because on the other side of your obedience is somebody's freedom. Yeah, that's good. If, you can't follow, if you can't follow me, who you can see, how are you going to follow God if you can't see him when he asks you? This tells me a whole lot of people, me a whole lot of things. When someone doesn't want to do what I'm doing, it's probably because they think, oh, well, that's not who I am. But maybe on the other side of your being, it might be who you are. Maybe God's in this thing. Maybe on the other side of what we're going to be able to do, you're going to get a visitation of the Spirit. I've seen people do this. Like, put your head back like taking a drink. Put your bucket up. And just receive. Like you're drinking. Father, right now. Right across this auditorium, I release your prophetic anointing. I release it. Receive. Receive. Walk in it. Live in it. Declare it. Proclaim it. Just put your hands down now. Open your eyes. But don't shift your heart. Who feels their heart's a different place? You're in receiving mode. What would happen if you stewarded this place that you're in? If you managed it, but you recognized when you shifted and you brought yourself back here, when you've got a problem, the problem shifts you away instead of staying there while God drops an answer in you. That's prophetic people. We hear the voice of God. We understand the restraint and the release of God. That's prophetic people. God wants you to be prophetic. Take your seats. That's what God wants you to be, a prophetic person. All right. We're to be, we're, we're. Revelation 19, I said this before, the testimony of Jesus 
it's, it's, it expresses the prophetic nature of God. In other words, your, your, your testimony confirms Christ. Right, I would imagine even that last little exercise for some of you, you actually felt a shift in your spirit. It wasn't your head that shifted, it was your spirit that came alive. That's an exercise that's spiritual. Your head wouldn't think that up, most likely. But that, you probably become, a lot of people become aware, uh, have an awareness of the Spirit of God in that position. So what I'm trying to say is that what God wants us to do as a church is steward the things of God till they become ours. And it takes a prophetic spirit to do that. The Bible makes Romans 10, 9 and 10, says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made of salvation. People get really upset with me when I try to get them to make it, to actually use attitude when, they, when I get to make a statement. Most of them don't want to shift. They say, well, that's not who I am. Well, let me tell you this, that who you are now is not what God made you in the beginning either. Your family shaped you. Your church has shaped you, your schooling, your, your, your bad experiences, your good experiences, they all have built you into a, a kind of a, put, built a, you into a culture. But when you came into this world, you had no pants on and you're screaming your lungs out. Am I right? Yeah. You, you weren't shaped in any way whatsoever. But I believe that God wants to do is to, is to sh He wants to shape us as a prophetic people so we can shift heaven into earth. He wants us to be at the gate. He wants to be gate people bringing heaven into earth. And that means you have to get outside the limitations of your soul. I said in the first session, if you had a child and someone stole your child, you wouldn't be sitting there saying, well, would you please bring my child back? Yeah. You'd be going aggressively after it. Yeah. If you had a very sick child and you determined you were not going to let that child die, you'd be stirring your spirit, doing everything you can to find life for that child. Yeah, yeah we sit in church being like little mice. No, Forgetting that the fact that the Bible makes it very clear that the kingdom of God suffered violent and violent people take it by force. We've created a culture in our world that's nice. We don't upset anybody. I was part of that for years. I walked away from it at 16 because I said to my mum and dad, I'm not against God, but there's nothing they're saying here that, that, that fits me that, that I can use to, to shape my life on. I was a good little Presbyterian boy. I wasn't born again because they never told me how to get born again. But what I'm saying here today, there's a world that you and I live in, your neighbors need God to visit them. They need your violence towards the kingdom of God to shift the atmosphere so God can come through to that neighbor. They're worth fighting for. Wherever we've lived, our neighbors have come to Christ. I love. I, I, I'm flying. I, different than the first meeting, but that's just me. I want you to come tell them to you. This is my wife, and I'm well pleased. <laughs> See, she would not consider herself to be a kind of prophetic person. She she does now because she's lived with me. But she's got all the neighbours' kids saved. Tell them about you. <clears throat> well, as a young mum, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, I, well, I, I give my boys a story every morning before they go to school and give them some questions and pray for them. So this happened and ended up, I'd have 13 of my neighbor's kids come every morning to my house and 
tell, do the same thing. I'd tell them a story, three questions, and I'd pray for them all. And they'd all be scattered and splattered on my floor every morning. So I'd say to the kids, come on, guys, you've got to go to school. No, it's lovely on the floor. I go, listen, get off that floor and go to school. <laughs> so that would be my argument every morning. But I led all these children to the Lord over time. And 28 years later, I'm sitting in Sydney Airport, <clears throat> Very good, gone somewhere, I'm just on my own. And suddenly this tall young man stands in front of me and he goes, you wouldn't be Judy McIntyre by any chance? I go, yeah, I am. He said, you used to smack me. I go, did I? You go to jail <laughs> now, kids, you? you know. <laughs> and I'm going, oh boy, I'm in trouble now. He says, but uh, I've, um, I've backslidden. I've just arrived from New Zealand into Australia. And I'm just saying in my heart to God, God, if I ever bump into Ferg or Jude McIntyre, wow. I'll come back to you. And as he's saying this, he's coming down the escalator and I'm going up. So he just follows me. And I said, okay, mate, you know what you got to do. Let's rededicate him back to yeah, God. That was awesome. Know. Keep in touch with him. I was in Tauranga, North Island. And a young lady comes up and kisses me on the cheek. And she says, would you give that to Judy? And thank you for leading me to Jesus when I was seven years old. I said, no, I won't. Give me another one, I'll give that to her. <laughs> I'm more than a pretty face. But she was about to marry a young pastor. Church, it's the prophetic nature of the Spirit. It's the prophetic nature of the Holy Spirit. We need to be Holy Ghost junkies. Whether you want to be, whether you don't. The point is, you don't have the capacity. Of course you don't. Jesus knew that from the beginning. Yes. But you are in him. Everyone say, I'm in him. I'm in him. Can I have more attitude, please? <laughs> I'm in him. I'm in him. Go like this. I'm in him. I'm in him. That was all right, but I'll tell you what, some of you didn't do it, did you? You said, that's not me. I wish it was you, because maybe the Spirit of God would get on you when you did it. Because that's what I did for years. I had to get above my own unbelief. I had to get above my doubt. I had to get above my fears. Of course, it may not seem very eloquent or perfect way of doing things, but I'll tell you what, I'm here today. I would never have given this job to me, but God called me. To tell the church to get up, carry the power of God on it. There's answers inside of you for our nation. Your love is so unique to you that somebody's going to buy into it. Your joy is so unique, somebody's going to want it. It's the, it's, it's the prophetic nature of the Spirit. We need to get hungry for the Spirit of God and stop putting it into boxes, trying to put the, bo the Spirit of God in some kind of box that suits you. Because it's never going to be, you're never going to release Him to do the supernatural. Because your head's not used to the supernatural. We have to renew our mind, church. And you renew, I'll tell you when your mind's renewed, when the supernatural is natural. That's when you've got a renewed mind, when you can think of the supernatural as part of your daily walk. Yeah. That's good. Come on, church. Yeah. Some of you've got a wrong way to go. Life is not justified by turning up at church listening to a, to a sermon. Christ died for you. So that you will become one of his followers, a disciple of Christ, that would go into all the world. Scripture would go into all the world, go into the cosmos, and put in order what's not in order. That's the job of the church. You know, how am I going to do that? I'll tell you what. You, it's not hard to do when the spirit of God, when the spirit of God gets on you. We just saw an awesome thing here this morning with this yeah, guy. Yeah. Can't wait to hear his testimony tonight. Yeah. Pain in his back for 20 years. 
testified straight away the pain's gone. First time in 20 years. We were, we were both here. Neither of us could shift that pain. So. But we can believe, we can trust the Holy Spirit to yeah. do it. Yeah. That's the work of the Spirit. That's the, the prophetic nature. What made Nathaniel follow Jesus? Was that word of knowledge that Jesus had on him? What made those fishermen drop their nets and follow Jesus? It was the prophetic nature of the spirit that was on Jesus. Come on. I'm talking to the church. Luke chapter 4. The spirit of God's on me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. There's poor people. Don't go and try and reach people that don't want to be reached. But the Spirit of God will use you as people who recognize they've got needs. Heal the brokenhearted. Goes on. We, that's what you do. It's not some visiting evangelist or some visiting prophet. I'm here to get the Spirit of God on people. Father, I thank you for the burden of lost people. The same burden you put on me in 93 for lost people I place in him. There's no eyes that you've ever looked into that doesn't mean something to God, sir. Lost people matter to God, therefore they matter to you. Equipped the people of God. My God. God puts value on human life. I'm prophesying to this guy, but who asked off that prophecy? I wonder how many people didn't hear me. Because it wasn't, I wasn't looking at them. But the Spirit of God's on me. Thank you, Father. The Holy Ghost's in this room. It is. The Spirit of God's here. And don't be intimidated by the silence or the just the waiting around. God doing more behind your back than in front of your face. In this meeting right now, I'd say that it's been a 25 to 30 percent shift in the atmosphere but that's what I sense right now my God thank you Father 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 the spirit of intercession thank you thank you Father, the burden Thank you, Jesus. It comes over him. You know what this is what I hear? I just hear these words. Do the work yeah. of the evangelist. Today, he's calling you aside to put the supernatural power of God high on the agenda of your purpose summons them to appear before God call them to appear before me says God call them from the north call them from the south call them from the west call them from the east from the east call them to appear before me says I give you the nation I give you the keys to the city. Understand, says God, I give you the key to the city. I give you the key to unlock the hearts yes. of those that are controlling the gates of the city. For another season. The chapter's closed, says God. And from this day, I begin to write another chapter. Enter in, says God. I will take you places in your spirit. They're designed 
from the foundations of the earth for you. Understand, says God, I take away the limitations. I push back the limitations of your mind that I might breathe a fresh purpose. Says God, I come to energize the heart of my servant. with freshness and passion and desire. You shall feed the fire of my people. I just hear these. You know, the Holy Ghost got a good sense of humor. Because I just hear this when these two turn up. Asking is not a crime. Your light fires fire for a new season. My God. Thank you, Lord. We're to call things as not as though they were. We don't ask God to do things. We declare them. That's what prophetic people You create your future with the words of your mouth. God. Your eye has not seen it, says God. Neither has it entered your ear. But understand, says God, I've come to call you out from amongst men that I put that I might put my grace upon your life. Understand the day of visitation, says God. I've come to pick you up. Understand, I'm going to send you those that are bound. They that are bound in religion, says God, you shall set them free. My freedom, says God, shall flow through you like a river. My joy shall be your strength. And understand, says God, I put plans in your heart for the days that lie here. Consider this the beginning of a new day. Despise not the day of small beginnings. How you doing? Can I pray for you both? Both of you. I just want you to have what I've got, man. I just... I tell you, sir, you got a real shepherd's heart. You got a caring heart. You care about people. You do care about people. You got a mercy side to you as big as an elephant. Grace is on you. You're not going to deny who you are. You're allowed to have your bumps and cracks. and You're allowed to have your dents. It's called humanity. But when God comes on you, when the grace of God turns up, all you see is God's grace and God's love. God's calling you to reach your generation. I see hospitality on you both. I see young couples like yourself spending time with you. And right now, God's calling you to his word to strengthen you. Don't despise the difficult days. God's on you. God's in you. Don't, don't despise the difficult your father's going to bring you through that. And you're going to be strong for those that are not strong. My God. And together, says God, I'm going to excel the pace 
of transition. Father, the same anointing is on me. Place it on them. Visit him. Visit him. Visit him. I see two young couples that you're quite close to that are watching you and love you guys for who you are. They are God's gift to you. You're going to harvest them into the harvest. I think you know who they are. Bless you. Looks like your time's up. We're going to have a Holy Ghost night tonight. If you're game enough, come along. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Fergus? Bless you, Fergus. So appreciate you bringing the, the, the ministry. I, you know, I said first service, I'll just say it again. One thing Fergus says is, is it's going to be caught, not taught, the way he ministers. And I really hope you're catching something of that prophetic spirit, that, that need to, to grab a hold of the spirit of God that's in you. And if, it, if, it, if it's not waking it up, let it wake you, wake you up. You know, let it just start to tingle inside of you and, and be hungry. I love that thought. Be hungry for the Spirit of God. We welcome you back to tonight. You know, tonight at, at five o'clock, every week our services have been bigger as people have come. And I think it's a great chance just to go, you know, I just want to, it's been dry. I want to push into who God is. I want to encounter God. And uh, when God's in you. It, it's natural, like like Fergus has said. You know, we have doctors and nurses and school teachers and um, stay-at-home mums and and tradies, and and you're the guys and girls and ladies and men that are going to meet people and and love them and bring that same gift and be able to put a hand on somebody's shoulder, impart wisdom, uh, impart the supernatural of God. That's you. That's you. And so we've got to let that thing be real in us. And we've got to speak to our own spirit. And I encourage you to be a part of that. So tonight, that's what that's about. Five o'clock, you'll be encouraged. Uh, no doubt about that. Next Sunday as well, we uh, just um, welcome you back for that, the, the, the final in that series. So it'll be a great night. I want to just invite you maybe this morning, you just want a little bit more prayer. We always invite you out the front here. Maybe you don't know Jesus and uh, you want to know Jesus. I'm not going to do a full sort of expose of that, but we'd love to talk with you as well. So have a great day. Um, enjoy some community. Have a cup of coffee. Pat someone on the back. Encourage somebody. And we look forward to seeing you tonight at 5 o'clock. Bless your heaps.